Lifetime allowance has been abolished. That is correct. Lifetime allowance has been abolished by the UK government in 2023. I can honestly say I had absolutely no idea that this was going to happen and nearly everyone inside the industry was caught out. I had heard rumors of lifetime allowance being reduced from the current or the previous rate of 1.073 million down to maybe 750,000. It being abolished came as an absolute surprise. I was actually sitting on a client meeting and my phone started blowing up with other IFAs messaging me saying, have you seen this? And I thought I need to check it for myself. I don't believe it to be true. I cannot believe it. This is in my own personal opinion, the conservative government effectively saying, F it. We understand that probably we're not going to get voted in um, uh, in the next uh, general election. So why don't we look after all of our big fat cat friends in the city and all of our friends in political, uh, powerful um, uh, business positions who have very large pension pots, one, two, three, four, five, 10 million pound pension schemes. Effectively, for me, this was a tax um, to help out, a reduction of tax to help out the rich and no one else. I actually messaged one of my family chat to let them know this is probably the biggest, sneakiest change to UK pension legislation which is dramatically going to bring down tax revenue um, for the UK government and effectively for British um, citizens. So that's the problem side of it, uh, and it is a problem. But from a positive perspective, you, if you have divine benefit or, or um, de divine contribution schemes that were approaching or in excess of lifetime allowance, which was 1.073 million, you are quids in. And I'm going to be telling you today how you can make the most of this and maximize um, uh, your pension schemes. So a bit of a history of lifetime allowance. Lifetime allowance was introduced in 2006. In 2011, it actually peaked up to 1.8 million. Ever since 2011, the UK government have gradually been bringing it down. It currently, it got back to 1.073 million. So what this now means is, if you have a defined benefit scheme, which is say worth a million or one and a half million, or a defined contribution scheme, which is worth one million or one and a half million, and you would have previously exceeded your lifetime allowance and paid a 25% tax on every everything over 1.073 million, you can do some very effective financial planning now. Now, for clients in the United Kingdom and in Europe, you could be utilizing a QROPS. A QROPS has no lifetime allowance charge once you've uh, completed the transfer. So a QROPS transfer triggers your BCE8, Benefit Crystallization Event 8, which means you are tested at your lifetime allowance at the point that you do the QROPS transfer. Now. It's very likely, I would say 90% certainty, the Labour government is going to reintroduce lifetime allowance. They've already gone on record. They almost possibly can't. Labour can't possibly be seen to be helping the rich fat cats uh, with their pensions. So they've almost certainly said they're gonna bring lifetime allowance back in. Now, what rate they bring it back in at? One, one and a half, two million, who knows? But the point is there's a limited window of opportunity at the moment to take advantage of this situation because say you complete a QROPS transfer um, this year, 2023. On the next general election, say Labour instantaneously bring lifetime allowance back in. When you did your QROPS transfer is when you're tested for lifetime allowance. You will never be tested ever again for lifetime allowance because it doesn't exist in QROPS jurisdictions, Malta being the most popular of which. So you effectively would have ticked the box for lifetime allowance, say you had a 5 million pension pot and you do a QROPS transfer this year and then at the new general election they introduce lifetime allowance again. Doesn't bother you. You had your test for lifetime allowance, your benefit preservation at eight, nothing more that you need to do after that. Now, if you don't want to use a QROPS because obviously your pension pot is not getting towards lifetime allowance, you can obviously just use a SIP. Now, a lot of people are saying, I'm not sure if I want to use a QROPS. I've read a lot of stuff online, a lot of bad publicity. Yes, QROPS have a horrible reputation. Why do QROPS have a horrible reputation? Well, number one, they're mainly peddled by financial advisors who are non-FCA regulated and work outside of the UK. That means lower, leg lower legislation and regulation and generally clients who are a little bit more adventurous with their capital and make stupid decisions. The financial advisors put them into very high, high cost insurance bonds, um, uh, trail pain funds, uh, expensive DFA management, which effectively means they have high exit penalties on those plans. So you need to be very careful in terms of who you work with to utilize a QROPS because a lot of bad advice out there, uh, particularly in the international market. If a UK resident client, it's less, it's harder to get bad advice, but it's still possible in the UK. So you need to be um, uh, very careful. So that would be my summary for people. If you're looking at lifetime allowance and you're interested in this, QROPS should almost certainly be part of the conversation that you need to understand. What exactly is it? How could it potentially benefit you? Because since Brexit, 
we expected the UK government to come down hard and shut off QROX transfers in Europe um, as they did previously for non-EEA resident clients. In 2017, they stopped everyone outside of Europe. Well, they didn't stop them. They implemented a 25% tax charge for anyone who did a QROX transfer non-EEA since 2017. We expected them to do this for Europe as well, but they didn't. Actually, what, uh, um, uh, what the Brexit did was it got the UK government to confirm that UK residents can also um, uh, utilize QROPS. Not that I just want to be pushing QROPS, QROPS, QROPS. We actually do more SIP advice at Cameron James than we do do QROPS advice because not every client is living in Europe and not every client was approaching um, uh, their lifetime allowance. So really important point in terms of uh, understanding QROPS as to how it could help you uh, with your lifetime allowance. If you're not particularly approaching your lifetime allowance, say you have two, three, four, five, six, seven hundred K, you're thinking, okay, well, I'm well, at the moment, lifetime allowance has been abolished, so you don't even really need to think about it, but we need to think it will come back in almost certainly uh, if and when Labour come back into power. So you need to start strategizing inside your SIP solution as to how to try to potentially avoid future lifetime allowance. Now, that's something you can do with ourselves here at Cameron James. If you wanna get in touch below uh, via the link in our Calendly in the description below, or you can head over to the website to have a full look around, do some more reading and homework on ourselves before um, uh, reaching out. Guys, if you have any questions about lifetime allowance, anything you want me to answer specifically, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, the very best thing you can do um, uh, to make me happy is to like the videos and subscribe to the channel to let YouTube know that we're delivering good quality content. And as always, take care with the UK Pension Assets.